Welcome to the CEIBS China Knowledge Podcast, produced by the China Europe International Business School. In 1988, 30 years ago, the tech movement was very young. The world was busy welcoming the 20 kilogram cathode ray tube desktop with that green light. Busy declaring the typewriter dead, announcing that Fortran and Kabul will be the Nirvana to the future. But in Silicon Valley, where all this was going on, the visionaries were not satisfied. They had something else in, on their mind. But if you had asked anyone to bet outside Silicon Valley that someday the world will have a 200 gram or less device in their hands with real-time data, real-time connectivity, they would have told you, "Stop smoking, whatever. Go write science fiction." In 30 years, we know that out of that movement were born Microsoft and Apple, Intel and Cisco. Facebook, Alibaba, and Tencent, and we all know that in 30 years, the enterprises that were born out of those movement, the newborns back in the days of tech revolution, rule global capitalism. The science fiction is reality, and the venture capitalists who fuel this movement have made it 250 billion dollars a year venture capital sector. In 2018, right here, right now, another phenomenon is taking place: the impact movement. It's a 26 trillion dollar sector with responsible, sustainable, and impact investing, and it's turning the economic system on its head. And its thesis is simple: Let's usher in capitalism 2.0 that can address. The weaknesses of capitalism 1.0. So don't get me wrong. Capitalism 1.0 delivered tons of good, free markets, tech revolution, industrial revolution. We have significantly improved quality of life, health outcomes, significantly improved literacy. But you all know, capitalism 1.0 has augmented inequality. One percent of the world owns two thirds of the wealth. It has exasperated poverty. Three billion still live under five dollars a day. Most of all, it is devastating the planet. And those of you who saw the IPCC report recently, it projects that we will burn through the 1.5 degree Celsius carbon budget. We know capitalism 1.0 does not work for the whole world. It may work for the one percent. It doesn't work for the hundred percent. And therefore. Right here, right now, I hope you believe in something, just like the folks in Silicon Valley believed that an impact revolution and an impact movement is possible because 26 trillion dollars is not to be scoffed at. My job today is going to be to walk you through the world and tell you how deep the movement is, how it is on the right side of history. But before that, I want to prove to you. There are three characteristics that our movement shares with all successful historic movements, so that you can go back home convinced that indeed you heard about a revolution being born. So here are three characteristics which have been successful through all movements of mankind. First, all movements are simple but revolutionary ideas that restore justice or balance. Think of it. Women should vote. All citizens are equal. Segregation based on color is bad. Impact investment also has a simple thesis: capital has a higher purpose. Capital can be used to deliver environmental and social impact alongside financial return. That profits can drive impact and need not be impaired. Second. All successful movements are replicable and reinterpretable. At the beginning of the last century, Susan B. Anthony in U.S. and Amelyn Pankhurst in U.K. were working to give women the right to vote without real-time emailing system, without social media, without asking each other, "What's your next move?" Likewise, 
impact investing is manifesting itself different ways in different continents. Responsible, sustainable and impact investing are just three different avatars of this movement. But think of others. You will hear heads of philanthropy saying it is disrupting philanthropy. You will hear institutional investors say it is cannibalizing it. To some, it's an investment thesis. To others, it is monetization of social outcomes through impact bonds and outcome funds. Whatever way you look at it and however you interpret it, it is clear that profit and purpose are here to coexist. Third and most importantly, revolutions that have succeeded are inclusive. They have included people irrespective of their color, caste, religion, creed, nationality. Even the Arab Spring that our millennials here in the room may know of quickly spread to 20 plus countries, although it is still work in progress. Similarly, our impact movement is inclusive. It's inclusive of philanthropies on the left and institutional investors of the on the right, of for-profits and non-profits, of private markets and public markets, of big business and small startups. So first of all, I hope you can convince yourselves that the revolution we are talking about has core characteristics of what makes sure it will end on the right side of history. Now let me take you through a whirlwind tour around the world and tell you how this movement is taking ground and then we'll come back to right here where we stand and ask some questions. Let's start in the neighborhood. South Korean impact investment market just breached the $500 million mark and our national advisory board. So GSG is an independent multilateral. We are a UN-like body with 21 countries and European Union as members. And I'm going to take you through a tour of some of these national advisory boards. So South Korean NAB just convinced its government to set up a $300 million social innovation fund. If you go down south, 70 degrees from Seoul to Sydney, in Australia, our National Advisory Board, you know, has just been able to convince its government through too, to set up a large impact fund, $300 million again, coincidental, but with private capital matching public capital. Across the Korean state in Japan, the market doubled in size between 2014 and 2016. And our Japanese NAB is building its first wholesaler. And they took another idea from our network of big society capital and convinced the Japanese government to unlock dormant accounts and unclaimed accounts to release four and a half billion dollars for social purposes. Let's cross the Pacific. United States of America. It is the largest market in the impact sector. Back in 2050, 15, it was about 50 billion in size and it is projected to be 100 billion dollars in size by 2020. The impact investing out there is being defined by entrepreneurs, people you have heard of like Elon Musk of Tesla, one of the largest impact enterprises in the world. And on the investment side by people like McGlashan, Bill McGlashan, those rise fund, first fund was $2 billion and they have a second fund coming out shortly. The government is creating laws and those of you who followed the Opportunity Zone an as announcement, there are tax benefits for engaging in, in impact investments. Just last month, the US president passed a new act called the Build Act, which is going to redefine the DFIs and OPEC in particular and put impact at the center of the agenda. Let's cross the Sierra Nevada desert. Let's go to, you know, Mexico first. We're along the relics of Aztec and Mayan. When I was there this February, I discovered a first private sector fund of funds, a $125 million fund by Sonan Capital. Across the Amazon, Brazil has created a national strategy alongside our NAP. When I looked at the Brazil market, just this year, they had the biggest VC deals ever, two $20 million deals in Dr. Consulta and General Water, the largest Brazil had seen in the impact VC sector. Let's keep going down south over the Andes, Chile. Chile, Santiago is going to host the fifth annual GSG summit in Santiago next November. So those of you who want to get into the throes of this, be there between 17 to 20th November next year. But they have people like the former president Lagos on their impact investment national advisory board. 
across the Andes in Argentina, where G20 head of states meet in just two weeks from now. The government itself built a first fund of funds. This, their stock exchanges making ESG reporting mandatory. They just launched their first, first social impact bond. And I just heard last month, the Rice Fund made the biggest Argentine VC investment in a, ed, a, you know, in a ed tech company with a $20 million VC investment. Let's cross the Atlantic. Let's come to Europe. In Portugal, a vibrant market with impact bonds, the government is creating a 55 million euro social innovation fund to motivate young social entrepreneurs. Portugal is home to Gulbankia Foundation, which has been carrying the mantle for the social leadership in the country, building accelerator, incubators and different kinds of funds. Up now, next to it, France, President Macron has just promised a social business act. In fact, in France, the pension funds called Solidarity Funds have allowed pensioners to put 10% of their assets under management into social stocks. Across Germany, across the Rhine, Germany has now two social impact bonds. And up north, Finland has been an innovator. Hard to believe, but Finland, I would say, is one of the biggest innovators in impact market. They have six bonds, including the first environmental bond, the first refugees bond, and the largest social impact bond of Europe. If you travel down to Mediterranean in Marco Polo's Italy, you'll find the government in this most recent budget this March announced again a $25 million outcome fund. And across the strait, in UK, where GST was formed because back in 2013, Prime Minister David Cameroon, when he was head of, when he had the presidency of G8, had put a task force under Sir Ronald Cohen to look at how can we unlock capital at scale for social sector, just like we do it for the regular, regular business entrepreneurship sector. And that particular research report led to the formation of GSG. Let's go down along the Silk Route. Israel has two bonds, four more coming and ESG reporting is mandatory. And back in India, my home, it's a billion dollar market annually with over eight billion dollar in you know, stock impact investments, touching 50 to 80 million poor annually and delivering 11% return IRR in dollar denominated. When you can bring people out of poverty and still get your market rate of return, why would you consider any other form of investment? And if you, those of who are skeptical about scale, India is home to over a dozen impact enterprises bigger than $1 billion in size. Amul and Dairy Farming, Ramki Enviro and Waste Management, AU Financials and Financial Inclusion, Renew Power and Solar. There is scale. Even our newest NAB, Bangladesh, is now a billion dollar market expected to grow 50% by 2020. So let's travel back here and stand right here in China and ask ourselves, when will China join this movement? How will China influence the impact revolution? You've had amazing influence on the global capitalism 1.0. How will you shape capitalism 2.0? As I come to the end, I want to leave you with this. We have a unique opportunity to build a world where capitalism is more conscientious, more human. We have a rare opportunity to make sure that this capitalism 2.0 works for the 3 billion poor, the whole 99%, not for the 1%. So I'm going to leave you with this. It's our role together to make sure we can help capital find its highest purpose. There's work to do. Do good, do well. It's possible together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patia. Thanks for listening to the CEIBS China Knowledge Podcast. Keep up with business in China by subscribing on iTunes or through your favorite podcast app. China Europe International Business School has campuses in China, in Shanghai, Beijing, and Shenzhen, as well as Africa in Accra, Ghana, and in Europe in Zurich, Switzerland. CEIBS is the bridge that connects the world and China.